Okay, I need everyone to step away from their computer, step away from their phone, step away from your tablet, give me some space of some kind, and uh, maybe uh, put one of those surgical masks on. <laughs> yeah. What have you been up to? I've been riding on a daydream. So I have some sort of a, a cold. Uh, I hate summer colds. We've had some beautiful weather here. Uh, no rain, just awesome days. The dew points are lower than I like and the heat's not quite as hot as I like, but still, uh, we've had a couple days in the 80s. It's just really, really nice late summer weather. And I got a cold somehow. I told Heidi sitting in the, the chair, we, we were just watching TV, I said, feel like I've got a cold coming on and that was like at noon and by 10 o'clock that night it was full on uh, sinus on that side sore throat the whole thing and then it moved to the other side of my sinuses and it was real heavy in the sinuses blowing my nose a lot hardly being able to breathe and then it moved into my chest now it's coughing and I'm getting better finally but it's been like three days this is really like I said crappy okay enough about the unpleasantries of having a cold in the summer what are we doing well today's the day uh, not for us uh, but for our son he's heading out to go to the sugar beet harvest and I'm gonna help him get the last few things that he needs in his van uh, we had it plugged in yesterday into the RV so his batteries are all topped off even though they haven't dropped very much uh, he went ahead and did an oil change and uh, I just kind of stood there and made sure that everything went okay because he's still a little unsure about a couple things uh, but he he wanted to do the oil change he made it perfectly clear to keep my hands off that <laughs> and I can see already that uh, his wheels have got some uneven wear I don't know if you guys can tell that but I can that's for sure right there yeah he's got a heavy feathering right there that's a shame I would have told him to get his wheels uh, get a new front end alignment because that's got some feathering going on there I think it's time for him to rotate his tires anyways it's gonna be interesting uh, to see how he does as far as this long journey and uh, how well the van does as far as fuel I don't think his gas tanks very big uh, some reason I think it's around Mm, it could be as big as 22 but it might be as small as 16 <laughs> uh, we were going to increase that but for us to do that on this van uh, the guy that had it obviously before us um, the original owner when they put the hitch on they took it to a shop and they had a custom hitch installed and this hitch is killer that is on this van I mean it's just it's huge it's it is a killer hitch however uh, the problem is it is welded on there and there's extra bracketry that's not needed that they probably felt was needed uh, that covers up the gas tank area to where it can't the gas tank can't be any deeper and that's the way that I did the old truck if you guys remember whenever I put a 38 gallon tank in place of my 19 gallon tank on the rear of the old f-250 um, it went down, you know, that extra capacity was all about down, so Yeah, that's gonna be something we'll have to deal with in the future after he's done with the sugar beet harvest I think he's gonna be in Chicago for a while with some friends and then he'll, he said he wants to come back home So we're not loading him up entirely and what I mean by entirely is that his Cargo carrier that's leaning back here. I don't know if you can see it It's just kind of that expanded metal that's leaning against the cabinets and then his steel box uh, that's supposed to be mounted on the back of the truck. Uh, he did want it on there, but then I told him we would have to relocate the license plate and we'd have to get a light for the license plate uh, for when he's traveling at night. And as soon as I told him that, he's like, ah, forget it. He goes, I don't really need it. He said, the only thing I want to do is uh, put the uh, uh, bike on the back. And whenever I told him that, you know, if if we we're going to put the box on the back so he could carry his generator with him he, he just decided it's probably you know not this trip because he's not going for any long period of time he's only been gone for maybe a month he's pretty much loaded up I had to bring this water bottle out for him 
so the refrigerator's on hell it's already down to 40 up oh, 39 <laughs> it just switched i got it set on 35 that thing works so well that is incredible that was one of the best purchases he made by far uh the blanket here um he usually leaves it down while he's driving uh, but you can see it just kind of goes up here and around the uh uh, this bar that we made for the uh, for the privacy I mean basically that's what it is and in the, his case insulation uh, you know if uh, in the winter he's cold he'll just heat this little area to keep himself warm and then of course uh, back here he'll heat this area without you know sharing I mean it's pretty pretty simple pretty simple thought uh, the only thing that he's going to be doing here that's a little bit out of the ordinary is he's going to uh, have his bicycle in here. He wants to put his bike in here, and uh, he said once he gets to his campsite, he'll take his bike out, he'll put a tarp over it, and uh, just strap it to something, you know, to the post or something that's there, picnic table, something like that, um, if he has to drive his van. I told him, I said, you're most likely not going to use your bicycle during the working part of this but uh, he said he knows but like I said afterwards he's going to Chicago this here is just a little bit off just the slightest ever so slightest bit I wonder if I could put something in there to help him out but it works I ain't saying anything so he's pretty much set here but man look at the bugs well the sun's kind of in your face but I mean there's just bugs galore on this thing I see why people would have those big shields they go on top of their trucks especially for fifth wheels um yeah i've got to clean that off i mean that's really really bad the good news is look at look underneath here how clean it is i mean it, we went through you know all kinds of crap and other than the truck blocking a lot of it uh, that rock shield that we had on the back boy that really helped out all right so he's all set up back here he's got his divider up like I said he kind of likes driving it with with it that way and um, again the bikes not a big deal he just leans it over against this uh, whenever he goes to sleep for the night and apparently I think he's going to stop in Wisconsin uh, for the night and I hate that this thing is that way Get his GPS up there for him, even though he doesn't use it as much as he uses Google Maps. Uh, I told him it's probably a good idea just to have it up there. Yeah, hopefully he does okay. He's got to drive, you know, drive such a long distance, and you know everybody's got to learn how to drive. But whenever you go through these cities, you get caught up with all the local traffic that, you know, they're rushed. They're point A to point B. I got a Kleenex here still. Uh, they're point A to point B. They're hurrying. They're they're rushing. They're driving like idiots. And sometimes you get caught up in that. I mean, I do too. But I told him, I said, if you want to save gas, um, he's pretty thrifty. So I kind of went on that tactic. I said, if you want to save gas mileage, you know, money on gas by getting better gas mileage. I said, just drop your speed down. You know, even though the speed may be 70 miles an hour and everybody's doing 75, uh, I said, just just don't do it. I said, do, you know, 65. So his cruise control works. Uh, everything works in there except the air conditioning. I feel real bad. We never got that air conditioning fixed. Uh, it needs a condenser. It needs the whole, um, uh, the tube, the uh, orifice and uh, the orifice tube. That's what it's called. And all that other crap. It definitely needs an air compressor because it's it's got some noise that was going on. I could get it to run the air for about, Mm, five minutes at the most uh, and it was making noise and it leaked all out immediately so yeah uh, let him get on his way I don't know when he's going to leave but I told him he better do it soon because he's got eight hours worth of driving and it's noon now alright so he's all loaded up the GPS has got the destination when's it say you're going to get there yes. yeah when's it say it's gonna get, you're going to get there 715 at night. Well, that ain't too bad. You can plan on getting there probably around 8. But uh, other than the van needing a good bath, it's in pretty good shape. So remember, uh, at some point get a quarter oil if you can find it cheap enough. Just 10W30. If you seem to be burning a lot of oil, maybe you can grab 10W40. 
um, check your oil probably after uh, well when you stop for gas um, or I should say when you stop for your first fill up but drive careful and remember all the idiots that you're driving around most of them are going to be uh, locals and they're just trying to get to and from work I wish I was you. <laughs> you want to work 12 hours? Yeah, it's, it works the, the easy part. Think about the money you're getting. It's a short term thing for a decent amount of money. All right, so we're going to let him go and uh, hopefully uh, he can give us an update of what's happening when he gets up there. There he goes got uh, 18 hours worth of driving I think he's only gonna be doing about I don't know it's like eight hours about a little over eight hours for him to go to us uh, it's Wisconsin I told him there's a loves truck stop in Wisconsin it's not that old that's right off the interstate right in line with where he needs to be it's about a halfway mark uh, they've got parking for trucks there but they've got parking off to the edges for vans I told him I said I'm so jealous the fact that he could just literally pull in anywhere with that van and find a parking spot all right up the hill he goes hopefully everything goes well bon voyage well it's been a couple days YouTube since that last little video and uh, our son has let us know that he made it fine uh, he had to go through a storm which wasn't an issue uh, I kind of seen it on the radar and he is um, kind of set up at the campground I still have a bit of my cold so that's why I'm, you still hear a little bit of goofiness in my voice other than what I'm saying that's always goofy so he's um, uh, at the uh, campsite he got there a day early he just parked in their parking lot and uh, now of course this morning he said he got a campsite and uh, he's already plugged in, charged his batteries back up. Uh, we do have something coming up, but the weather, I couldn't believe the change here. First, let me show you what it looks like uh, on the weather app. And you can see 72, low is 53, 79, low 50. But you, check it out. See how it's getting warmer? <laughs> We're getting back up into the 80s. Can you believe it? Now, uh, if we have a day in October, which this is running to October 3rd, if any of those days reach 90 that's a big deal in Northeast Ohio at least in this area because we've never had a 90 day in the month of October ever uh, as far as in recorded history as far as keeping records going back like a hundred years or so so that'll be different that'll definitely be different I like it I don't have a problem with it so we're gonna take advantage of those warm days we're gonna go do a little camping trip at West Branch uh, talked to Heidi said hey there's a full hookup site that's available um, how would you like to go out and you know she'll have to drive back and forth to work and she says she don't have a problem with that um, it'll be good to get out and it'll be nice that we can do a full-blown tank flush I I like being able to flush the tank in a full site you know a, a permanent site um, I'm talking about the black tank flush well yeah, actually the fresh tank too because the fresh tank water that we have in there it was from the house and uh, we do have a little bit of bleach in there uh, so it's not that it's you know an issue but um, it's water that I used from one of our faucets not from the hose connections uh, so I had you know it going through the water softener and of course we took that water with us all the way to Hershey and back so I still have probably 15 gallons in there maybe a little less now maybe no it's probably still 15 gallons <laughs> But that's what we're doing, and uh, we'll pick this up a little bit and uh, tell you what else I'm going to be doing. If I can just get rid of this last little bit of the cold, there's so much more I want to do. Now, as far as um, videos that I've been posting, uh, one thing that I want to talk about, since this is just a, a what you doing video, you know, RV Daydream, what you doing, kind of a daily thing, nothing being said of any importance, really. The... Uh, reviews that I've been doing on these portable power stations um, you know 
I, I don't know how to, to really approach that. I got people telling me you're ruining, you know, your cut, your your viewer base, and you're selling your soul basically. I, I, hey, listen, I'm just getting stuff, and I'm trying it out. And if I like it, I shoot a video on it. That's it. That's all there is to it. So all these products that you're seeing is something that I've got, I've screwed around with, I looked at, I've tried out. And as far as longevity, I have no idea. Longevity is so subjectable that there's no way that you can really do you know good reviews on that because I can make a 1975 Sears tractor last since it was born you know since 1975 um, and I can use it all the time because I take care of things differently than other people as far as these battery banks um, that I'm getting these portable power stations yeah I, I could I could make them all fail immediately and I could say they're all junk I could also use them exactly the way they're designed and there could be an issue but I haven't had any issues on the ones that you guys have seen if I'm showing you it it's something that I've tried out and I've actually you know tested out and it's worked it's done okay I don't know I don't get it I I, I swear I mean I don't want to sound you know above anybody on this stuff but I swear to God these people are jealous or something I I don't know why I mean it's not like I'm getting handed thousands of dollars you know week after week month after month that I'm just you know being supported by this this is just you know little trinkets that they're selling because they need a mouthpiece like myself talkie pants <laughs> as Gene and John says um, to talk about the product they just need their product to be exposed on the market so people will get an idea of what they have to offer and maybe something they want to look at I again if I shoot the video if I put it up um, you know it must be something okay perfect example I'll show you something that was sent to me and you guys haven't heard nothing about it because I think it's junk alright here's something dash cam DV or D12 VRS from Whistler it's a 1280 by 720 30 frames per second um, yeah it's junk so you haven't heard nothing about it have you luxury dash cam automotive D16 VRS it's a Whistler uh, 1920 by 1080 30 frames per second uh, it's junk. Uh, you haven't heard anything about that, have you? Here's one. It's a, a Queso, and I don't even know what model number this is. Uh, it's been in the truck now for a short time, and it's junk. So you haven't heard nothing about it. So I'm out in the garage, and I can't find it. It was uh, another uh, another dash cam, and it just wasn't that good. I didn't. I didn't. I mean, I don't like it. I I don't care for a lot of the dash cams. Um, the other thing you didn't see. Uh, me do a review on or I think I might have talked about it but I said it was junk was uh, um, the BC 30 I think it is and that's the backup camera that goes to my Garmin Nuvi cam uh, you know it's wireless so you just wire it in as far as power and then put it on the back of your vehicle and it's supposed to give you a you know a rear view it was junk it, it was horrible uh, so there's something else so I, I really have a hard time with people telling me trying to like call me out on my character as far as what I'm doing on my on my channel and the thing is the guy hasn't even posted one video I'm talking about one guy in particular yeah I was talking about one guy in particular here and I went into a little bit more of a rant you know the comments are there for you to express your opinions and uh, we read them you know why you feel as if the uh, reviews aren't something that uh, I should be doing well you aren't speaking for you know I, I don't even know I think our subscribers might be close to 16,000 maybe um, you're not talking for all those people you're not talking for all the people that might stumble onto one of those review channels that have nothing to do with our subscribers I you know I you gotta take certain responsibility again that word again responsibility um, as a commenter whenever you're posting your views and comments and think about how it's affecting the people that are around you. I try to think about that whenever I'm shooting videos. And uh, for the most part, I'm just showing you what I do. Whether that affects you one way or the other, that's still what I'm doing. I'm not doing it for any specific reason. Uh, but in this case, with the products, you know, I am telling you about a product that I got and I reviewed. Again, you should see the stuff that 
we're offered um, LED lights man if I get offered one more LED light or light bar or any kind of a flashlight <laughs> it's crazy I guess it's a product that is really easily made in China and apparently everybody makes one but okay we'll get back to the video now when we get to uh, the point where we're going to go camping here um, I will be able to finish out my video of the stable loads uh, these were sent to me at no charge and I did install them and there will be a complete video on that installation and you guys will uh, get to see the results of adding those to the truck uh, in a nutshell I like them a uh, little expensive uh, so again we'll talk about that a little bit later so I'm uh, putting some video up here that I just shot and my son sent me some text messages as I said, he was driving kind of in some rain through a storm, and he said that while he was driving uh, to Minnesota, uh, through Minnesota, um, to get where he's at, that he followed a trailer that this guy, you know, God bless him, he was he's getting it done, but uh, my son said, man, this trailer was shady, man. He said, I was scared to be behind it, and uh, I got a couple of photos he snapped with his phone. Well, there's just a, such a small world. Um, right next to my son now is this guy at the uh, sugar beet harvest. And he worked it last year. And he said he made good money last year. He said he made like $4,700 last year. Uh, so anyways, what I think is the best part is uh, the guy and his brother or his friend are from Girard, Ohio, which is like 30 minutes from here. It's not far at all. Uh, it's just such a small world. Well, anyways, this guy was saying that that trailer, obviously it was working hard because he said he went through seven tires. He had seven blowouts or seven flats and blowouts combined uh, between his location now at the sugar beet harvest and Virginia. <laughs> I mean, that's hardcore. I'll tell you that. That's hardcore. But I thought I'd just put that in there. I, I thought that was hilarious. All right. So Heidi's with us finally. She's uh, off work all day today. So what are we going to do today? Wash the camper. Yeah, the camper needs washed because we're going camping, which I already mentioned. Uh, I'm going to move the truck. It's really windy today, and you can see I've got, it's not my baggy Sully, but I've got a jacket on because uh, it's only about 76, I think. So it's it's not horrible. Um Again, like I said, we're going to get into the 80s when we go camping. Uh, we actually may be break that record, so that'll be nice. Uh, our son, he gave us a little bit of an update, you know, went to orientation, and uh, he actually has a neighbor. I posted it on Facebook if you guys want to go check that out, that made him van envious. <laughs> he said, you should see his van. It's really cool. <laughs> but we're going to... Uh, get this thing washed down because it's just covered in bugs that's our main thing the bugs and I'd like to wash the awnings on the uh, slide toppers or whatever they need scrubbed that means I gotta get on the roof so uh, hopefully my cold don't get upgraded <laughs> whenever I get up here and uh, start, you know cold and water and wind which it's not cold out but it's cold to me <laughs> see what happens Hopefully this will be the end of this video though, because it's going on quite a bit. A couple things we want to point out. Uh, we're using rain -X on this front window and microfibers because the bugs on this thing were pretty incredible and this is an automotive windshield so you can expect to have to clean it like an automotive windshield a couple things come in handy I'm way out of breath because I'm breathing through my mouth Whew. whenever you rinse this we have really hard water here and we even though we got it going through our softener the water is still really hard you definitely want to pick one of these up one pass water blade I don't know if you can read that but um, you don't get the handle obviously this is from a brush that we have but you do get the holder and the uh, water blade itself 
and that does a really good job of getting the I mean a lot of the water off so it doesn't spot again we have the water going through the softener but the, the water's just hard it's just hard water and the softeners from I don't even know uh, probably the early 60s so it's pretty old too uh, the other thing is I've done a review on this in the past you'll see a link pop up here um, these things are awesome uh, this thing folds down into a little 4x4 four four square and I uh, tell you it, it's just absolutely perfect whenever I got this initially because the old RV was so short I could climb up and get on this not a step <laughs> do not sit or stand on I would climb up and hang on to the RV and use those last two steps including the red step you're not supposed to stand on and climb on top of the RV and of course climb down the same way of course the old RV like I say is much shorter especially on the edges I think the edges were only like eight foot and a few inches um, with this new RV I thought immediately about this ladder because of how tall it is but it comes in it's just about right I mean I could do another foot I think this one is a uh, six foot ladder and I I could probably do a seven foot ladder but this will get most of the stuff done and of course we have a ladder on the back to take care of the rest so all we did was really just wash the front we're not gonna wax it or anything now we're going to uh, do the rest and the thing is is we got to spray it wash it with soap and rinse it immediately uh, before it dries if not it spots up real bad so that's the task at hand so here we are we got the whole camper nice and spick and span clean okay we didn't use spick and span but it is definitely clean and uh, now we're just cleaning up Michael's putting the ladder down oh, our fancy ladder is it easy oh, it's easy it's like a pain in the ass Nah. Okay, maybe not. That was pretty quick. Yeah. yeah, the hardest part is flipping those levers down at the bottom, which... Choose your feet. No, you gotta reach your finger. You put your feet to latch them, to lock them in, but... Oh, you gotta yeah. unlatch them. The front of it looks real good. Yeah, you don't have all those bugs bad. on there. Yeah. Yeah, the garage is still messy. It looks like that Bud and Michael has got some work to do because this right here is my spot this winter. She can have this spot this winter because mine's in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. My car won't have any snow on it when I go to work. Neither will mine. Nor the RV. Nor me. <laughs> oh, you're funny. I have a conference call on Friday, so maybe I'll join you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just tell everybody off and adios. You, you never know what they might say. Oh, no. It might not be to my liking. No, it needs to be what you have to say is not to their liking. Well, I have to hear something first, so. Like what? I don't know. I don't oh. know what they're going to say. Can't be good if they're having it on a Friday. Sure it is. It means... Well, we usually have them on Thursday. Tuesday. Well, they have a golf league on Tuesday. It's the oh. banquet. <laughs> okay. That All could right. be. Close out the video because i got to put this, edit it, and put it up. Okay, so uh, we're pretty much done for the day. And I'm going to make Michael put all this stuff away. The hose that's a mile long. And maybe even all that stuff there. So, as always... We hope to see you out there. Bye.